But the biggest thing I see with lifestyle is this here, the flow state. Out of everything, I feel like this is the most central key for all of us to pay attention to in terms of our physical bodily health, as well as our mental and emotional health. So let's look at this a little bit more in detail. So our conscious flow state, we wanna see activity, the balance of our activity and our rest and recovery. So when we have a certain flow state, there's a sense of presence, a sense of ease. But when we, you know, we're getting out of the flow state, we're squeezing, there's a sense of anxiety, we're trying to get things done, we're multitasking, we got to get things done. So we have time later, but later never comes because we're always getting things done. And then life becomes a struggle, we're over amping ourselves. And then on the other spectrum there, if if we're not doing enough, where there's a sense of boredom or, boredom or something missing, where we're not taking on enough, where when we have that sense, you know, we need to see, okay, what can I do a little bit more to get into the flow state? So there needs to be that balance of activity and rest. If we're also in this range here, the past may matter most to us, and then we might be entangled with personal worldly matters that actually drag us down into a lowered functional energetic state. So here in the flow state, we want to think about containment, calibrating our own energy cadence. So for some of us, we might have more energy to stay in the flow state. Some of us we may have to calibrate. We recognize we have a certain energy reserve that we may not be able to do as much as someone else, but we find our own cadence in that respect. And then when we do find that flow, then there's a sense of meaningfulness. You know, there's not a struggle. And then a sense of ingeniousness, like something does dawn, that seventh sense opens up. But it all starts in our heart. You know, when our heart is actually oriented, there's a compass of our, in our heart where we have a sense of what's important, what's not. It allows us to begin to calibrate and be contained in that flow state. So let me show you this next slide. The next slide is a little bit blurry, but I have some things to add to it, which goes along with this. So they call it the flow cycle, and it's derived from this flow research collective. So what happens here is when we're struggling, we're in a state of what's called stuck in beta brain waves. Now, if you're not familiar with brain waves, there's certain frequencies in that respect. So when we're stuck in brain waves in terms of we're struggling with something, we're trying to get something done, we're, we're just on the go all the time, our cortisol levels raise, our ep norepinephrine levels raise, and we're just we're kind of just stuck in that mode. But we want to see what it takes to begin to have more or less of an aha experience where we say, okay, let's stop here. Let me start to realize more what, what needs to be done with my pace. And that's where what's called alpha waves kick in and nitric oxide is released. Nitric oxide helps to relax the blood vessels, opens things up. And this is when we find a conscious flow in our daily living, where there's a sense of sequence. We, we're beginning to calibrate. We're less, less over -amping, more more intensity if we need to. We're finding a conscious flow in our daily living. And then when we find that flow, it leads to something called theta and gamma waves, where it allows for dopamine and endorphins. You know, endorphins are endogenous, you can say morphine effect, where we have a sense of, wow, this really feels good. And that's when we engage in total presence activities. It could be a music, art, nature, conversation. Now, Ray's not here tonight. He's, he does drumming there in a band. But... When we're, in a, we're in an activity that totally absorbs us and we're not thinking about any, you know, nothing else comes to mind. That's when it opens up these theta and gamma waves. And like, just, there's no other place we want to be except in that activity. And then allowing, again, for recovery, where it engages something called delta waves, delta brain waves. And that's when serotonin, oxytocin are kicked in. And that relates to a regenerative rest and relaxation, forms of endearment, hugs, touch, spiritual communion. You know, it, it allows for, for that. And we need to see how we can engage with that and in and, and balancing ways with all of these. You know, in our daily living of flow, we need to see how we can not get stuck in beta waves. 
you know, finding the activities that totally absorb our attention, where we're totally present, and then finding ways of relaxation and recovery. So there's flow states. Now there's a term called eudaimonia, which stems back to Greek times. And this is kind of derived from conversations that Aristotle, Plato, Socrates had, but it was updated by this statement, well-being is not so much an outcome or an end state as it is a process of fulfilling or realizing one's daemon, spirit or true nature. That is, of fulfilling one's virtuous potentials and living as one was inherently intended to live. Let me just read that again. Well-being is not so much an outcome or end state as it is a process of fulfilling or realizing one's daemon, spirit, or true nature. That is, of fulfilling one's virtuous potentials and living as one was inherently intended to live. And that was coined by psychologists DC and Ryan in 2006. But it stems way back to ancient times as well as relative times, and I think we can all relate to that. When we find a flow state, consciously and living, or even that theta state, there's a sense of well-being. Eudaimonia means good spirit, a sense of well-being. Okay, let's let's let this kind of sink in a little bit, and so we'll have a meditation here. So, you know, hand on our heart. And we'll look to sit upright there, and then actually you can put one hand over your heart, your left hand over your heart and your right hand over your solar plexus, which is just below your, your rib cage in the center. And then you know, if you wanna close your eyes and then imagine breathing in through your heart as you breathe in and then breathe out through your solar plexus. And breathing in through your heart. and out through your solar plexus. Continue along those lines on your own. And begin to relax and letting those alpha waves be kicked in, letting nitric oxide begin to dilate those, your blood vessels, letting a little just relaxation come as you breathe in, as you breathe out. Let's still our hearts and our minds. Appreciating the bodies that we do have. We only have one, our one body and to really appreciate it. and opening up to how we can consciously care for it in terms of what we eat, how we exercise, how we handle stress, but ideally finding a flow state. Open up to see how you can find a flow state. You know, let a realization come. a greater flow state. Relax your shoulders, let them drop. Breathing in. Breathing out. In the stillness of this moment, we give thanks for our bodies. With deep thanks and gratefulness. And as our hearts are positioned this way, we allow for a seed to be planted. So there's a greater realization of how we can care, care for our bodies. Or we only have one body. And 
as we hold this stillness. We feel whole and complete and open. Open for our next phase of deciding and discerning. And we'll look to see now how we can articulate that individually. So we'll open our eyes and continue on. And let's, if you have a piece of paper, you know, how will you care for your body? How I will care for my body. So if you want to write something down, hopefully you have something to write on. Let's take a moment individually to articulate something in that respect. 